I'd like to introduce you to Scott Reed. Well, thank you, Michaela. And uh, welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar. I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day today to uh, join us. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Belimo ERT Energy Valve version 3.0, uh, solving low delta T leveraging IoT. Uh, the Energy Valve is now a IoT capable device. And as you can see by some of the background imaging, uh, we now have uh, cloud capability. So I'm going to talk a little about that in the upcoming slides. There our new cloud analytics platform that we have and our suite of cloud services that we have available with this new uh, Energy Valve version 3.0. Uh, just in terms of this project, this was one of the largest projects here at Belimo, and it's a true testament to the Belimo culture, uh, showing the collaboration amongst the entire uh, organization to bring a product to the market that is truly a leader in technology and provides exceptionary, uh, exceptional co customer value. Um, I'd like to thank our sales team for all the uh, input they provided of the voice of the customer. Uh, our innovation team for them transitioning this into uh, an actual product that uh, represents what the customer was looking for. And I'd also like to thank our uh, marketing team for all of their efforts for on the launch uh, regarding um, website update and marketing materials and so forth. Uh, one of the handouts for this presentation is uh, the new brochure that we created for the Energy Valve. So I'd invite you to uh, download that after, uh, after the webinar for, uh, for your future viewing if you wish. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the webinar today. So what are we gonna talk about? So first of all, we're gonna go over a little bit of an uh, overview of the Energy Valve. For those of you that are not familiar with the Energy Valve, we'll just give you a basic overview of the components understand uh, the components that are used and how it's comprised. We'll go over the Energy Valve 3.0 enhancements and uh, new features, so you can see those as well. We'll go over some design enhancements. Uh, we have, uh, we're also launching a, a new ultrasonic flow sensor for our flange models. We currently have ultrasonic sensor for our half inch through uh, two inch NPT models, but now we're gonna be having a uh, ultrasonic uh, flow meter for our larger sizes. We're gonna talk about that as well. And I finally close it out with some uh, industry recognition that we received for the product. So let's break down a little bit of an energy valve overview here for you. Here we have item number one, which is, uh, the, we're talking about the actuator here. And this actuator is uh, one of the most uh, advanced actuators that we have in the platform. It has uh, a lot of, lot of uh, capability built into it. Uh, starting off, first of which is the web server, integrated web server. This allows for a TCP IP network. There are valves, uh, energy valves located all over uh, the United States and all over the world for that matter, that I can connect to sitting at uh, my desk here in Danbury via this web server. There's also integrated data logger in, uh, in the energy valve actuator. This here stores 13 months worth of trended data, data on power, data on flow, data on energy. All of that can be used for system transparency and for further uh, analysis. It's also integrated uh, BACnet. We have BACnet, uh, BACnet IP and BACnet MSTP integrated into this actuator. And new for Energy Valve uh, version 3.0, we've integrated Modbus. I uh, received a lot of requests from our Latin American market and some of the larger universities here in the United States for Modbus. So we have integrated Modbus uh, RTU and Modbus TCP. Uh, also integrated in that actuator is MP Bus. MP Bus is a proprietary uh, Belimo protocol that allows a sort of master of uh, up to 16 uh, valves controlled off of one master and then another 15 uh, slave devices controlled off of that, saving integration points. And finally, we've integrated cloud capability into this actuator. We now have cloud uh, analytic capability, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, more about that in the upcoming slides. Now I'll talk about the electronic flow meter. Uh, this here is a picture of the new um, ultrasonic that we're, we are going to be coming out with. Uh, this here has, uh, 
uh, true flow reading now as opposed to a flow calculation like you would receive with um, uh, pressure, uh, mechanical pressure independent valves. So you actually have a true flow reading, actual GPM reading, and all of our ultrasonic flow meters will be wet calibrated, which means they're going to be guaranteed for accuracy and repeatability as they're wet calibrated before they leave the factory. Now I'd like to talk about the uh, temperature sensors. We have two temperature sensors inter integrated into the energy valve. One on, typically goes on the supply side and one on the return side of the coil. Now those two temperature sensors allow us to measure the delta T across the coil, the difference between the supply and return water temperature. These are platinum-based RTD sensors, very high quality. And now with this, uh, having those temperature sensors and flow rate, we can now extrapolate BTU. So we actually have an integrated BTU meter as well. We also have logic incorporated into that, into that actuator, along with all the things that I described in item number one. There's also some more going on in that, in that tiny little actuator to further expand its capabilities. We have something called delta T management. And what delta T management does is maintains the delta T across the coil, basically to get the coil operating back at the design delta T. Uh, system inefficiencies uh, will cause excessive flow rates through a coil, system inefficiencies like not being balanced or pressure dependent va valves overflowing, for example, will cause an overflow through the coil. And at a point on that power curve of the coil, the coil will begin to saturate. So with the Delta T manager, we begin to modulate the flow rate to get it to appropriate level to get the coil operating back basically at the so We've already talked about the cloud optimization that we integrated into there. It's going to be advanced uh, analytics profile that we've integrated in there along with a core cloud. Uh, we'll talk about more of that in, uh, in upcoming slides. And we also have something called power control built into there. So this valve, you can set a flow limitation or what we call a VMAX uh, in a particular GPM, but you can also set a PMAX or a power limitation. So you can have the valve be controlled to a specific power output uh, as well. So now the valve becomes temperature and pressure independent. So let's get into some of the, the core uh, features for Energy Valve 3.0. And really at the core of the Energy Valve is coil optimization. And we call this slide here more savings because what we've done, we've expanded our delta T range, particularly on the higher end, going from 60 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We've had a lot of requests, once again, from our Latin American market and for heat exchangers as well that operate in the 70 or 80 degree delta T range, and we needed higher delta Ts for those. We also had some uh, requests from our colder environments uh, where they needed uh, higher delta Ts to capitalize on uh, more heating applications, condensing boilers, for example, who have typically 90 to 100 degree delta T. So this now allows us to go after those markets and provide more savings allowing Delta T management not only on the cooling side so much, but more on the heating side now as well. Another thing this does for us is positioning us for future and current energy standards that are being implemented, allows us having this expanded Delta T range positions us in a good place to be compliant with those. One of the things that we also integrated now is dynamic coil performance. So you can see changes in usage or uh, or operational characteristics on changes within the coil. You can see when the power starts to degrade in the coil, and you can see this happening dynamically. Is it's all integrated right within the actuator, within the within the integrated web server that we talked about on the previous slide. Uh, so, so apparency that has never really been seen in coil operation in a dynamic type of environment. One of the other things we've also done. It's integrated the Delta T set point right into the WebView interface. Now, this would be the Delta T set point that they wanted to use for the coil. It's the, in the case that the, the design Delta T of the coil was, uh, was not available, or if the design Delta T was uh, suspect to be used because the coil was possibly an older coil, uh, you know, 30 plus year old coil, or potentially some fouling going on that coil, they weren't sure if they're able of achieving that design Delta T. So what you can do now is you can install the energy valve, run it for a period of time, get flows at the low end and flows at the high end, 
and then you can actually calculate the actual delta T set point, the best integrated delta C delta T set point for that coil right in the actuator. In previous versions of the uh, energy valve, uh, the delta T set point to, to determine that, it would need it to be exported from the actuator, imported to what we call a data analysis tool. This tool would uh, calculate the delta T set point for you. Now that labor savings has uh, been reduced, again, providing more savings there as well by having this integrated directly into the web server interface. So now we're talking about the interface. This would be a good transition to this slide here. This here is a picture of the overview screen of our web server interface. It's been uh, based on customer feedback. We've simplified it. We've made it easier to use. We've streamlined it to the necessary data points that they want to see. And it'll made it a much cleaner, more robust design. We've also made these data points live, meaning if you were to click on uh, on the top left, for example, on GPM, you would get a chart that would show uh, historical operation over time. So it not only is meaning live, meaning it refreshes every second, so you actually see the GPM, but it also gives you a historical point of view as well. We've also integrated informational buttons uh, within here to provide guidance on what the uh, what the, the the parameter or the the parameter will be the best description of what the parameter is on the screen, what it means, and how it's utilized. So we also provided some, uh, some guidance there as well. The pages are customizable within the WebView interface. If you look here on the top, we've called this AHU45 webinar demo. So that way it can be uh, customized to a particular air handling unit that it's being used on, or if it's uh, in a particular location or a particular project, all that information can be customized right on the web page, giving the customer one more level of transparency and ease of use with the interface. We've added key performance indicators. Key performance indicators, once again, integrated right into the interface. Key performance indicators like total flow, total energy, uh, how often a Delta T manager is being used, where the valves have been operating. That's integrated right in there, once again, providing a high level of transparency that's really not available in other valves in the marketplace today. We've also made it easier from a navigational standpoint. We've added a startup wizard or a startup assistant that walks you through uh, the setup of the valve when the, the first time the valve is powered up. So where the valve is being installed, either on supply or return, uh, what type of media is being used, what particular VMAX setting was, was desired, but one of the nice things about uh, valves being ordered here in, the, in North America is that when the valve, uh, the customer specifies these things upon ordering, what particular VMAX they wanted, where the valve has been installed, um, and those settings are preserved into the startup assistant. So when the startup assistant starts for the first time, those settings will already be there. So this really, in that case, provides a verification that the valve, uh, the customer got the settings that they were looking for, that they ordered it correctly. So it's just one more check for verification. One of the nice things as well is we're able to save and reload settings from one valve to another. So if there were say 50 energy valves on a job and they wanted to save settings, we can export a XML file out of one valve and import it into another so to speed the, speed the setup of the valve. We've also improved the troubleshooting within, uh, within the user interface. As I talked about before in the overview screen, we've integrated uh, informational buttons. We haven't integrated the same thing for the troubleshooting section. The, if the trouble code is, uh, is, is triggered for an energy valve, it indicates what the trouble code is, and also indicates a possible solution for it with the informational button. So given that it's the customer a little bit or the end user a little more guidance on what possibly could be the error and how it could be corrected. We've added also a, a slew of uh, enhanced uh, items as well. Uh, I wish I had enough time to go over, over all of them today, but I'm going to concentrate on these here. This one here I'm going to talk about today is still along the lines of the enhanced user interface, and this one here comes in the category of new functionality. And new functionality, we've added complete user administration. Uh, some of our accounts have requested uh, the ability to add users 
and remove users and change the passwords of users to provide tighter security within the system. And we've incorporated that within to Energy Vow 3.0. So enter, uh, users can be added, uh, deleted, passwords can be changed. Um, so, and actually running in through the startup assistant, at the end of the startup assistant, it actually prompts uh, to change the password for desired uh, security purposes if, if that's necessary for the particular site. We've also added the software update capability. Now that shows to the strength of the scalability of the Energy Valve 3.0 uh, platform. So as we start to roll out new features, we'll be able to load those into the Energy Valve and that will not require replacing the entire Energy Valve actuator. So any additional features or uh, enhancements would be able to be loaded via, via software file similar to an XML file and the new functionality will be loaded right into the actuator. A little bit different than the way we've done things in the past, which would require uh, replacing the entire actuator. So this is one more way to make it easier for the, for the customer as well. If we have uh, updates to productivity of the valve, these can also be loaded right within the, right within the web user interface. Uh, and what you're going to see coming up, we'll also be able to load those within the cloud as well. But this one way gives one more way to uh, upgrade the existing product within the, within the marketplace. We've also added a commissioning report. Now what this is, is a, um, after the valve has been completely commissioned, there is a ability to generate a PDF that can be uh, provided to the owner or whoever needs to see confirmation that the, the valve has been correctly set up, set, uh, it's set at the proper uh, VMAX, I said at the proper uh, where it's installed in the system. It'll list the uh, the units that it's been set up in, just providing a uh, confirmation the valve's been set up. This also can be rerun. So if it's, if there needs to be changes to the valve based on uh, usage patterns or or loads, and they want to rerun this commissioning port report, this can also be rerun at a later date. Now I'd like to talk about one of the most exciting things with Energy Vault 3.0 is the addition of cloud services. Belimo has uh, typically been a leader in technology uh, since entering the valve market, particularly even all the way as far back as CCV. We've kind of taken CCV and uh, enhanced it to make it a little bit uh, different from the rest of the products on the marketplace. Then of course with the advent of mechanical pressure independent valves, and then transitioning that into electronic pressure independent valves. So having that trend and being a technological leader, uh, the migration to cloud services and IoT, the Internet of Things, was a natural progression for, for us and for the energy valve. Uh, we know the flow characteristics of each valve. We know the operational characteristics of the valve. But the one thing that we were missing to some degree was the uniqueness of each site's. So now having that information, we can take that data, the data of uh, operation within a system, harness that data, and using machine-based to optimize the, the coil system by optimizing uh, through cloud-based analytics. So we're providing really an advanced level of efficiency, which further separates energy valve from any product on the market today. These are the six core features uh, that I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, these here are, uh, these features are available at no additional charge by connecting to the, just by connecting to the uh, Energy Valve Cloud. Um, so these here, I'm gonna like to walk through each one of these with these today. The first one is the optimization of Delta T and flow settings. This here uh, provides uh, what it does is it looks at the data that's uh, being extracted by the energy valve, brings it up into the cloud, the cloud does analytics on it, and there is a Delta T suggestion uh, made, recommendation made on where the best Delta T set point should be, should be for the operating characteristics. This here can either be directly populated to the valve or it can be manually loaded by the customer. Um, either way, they would receive a email notification letting them know uh, what the best uh, delta T set point and flow set points should be for that valve based on the operating criteria. It takes approximately two months of data to uh, have enough of a data set to make a, a, a great uh, extrapolation, an accurate extrapolation. 
Uh, but that is the, the desire and uh, of this particular um, core benefit here. The next one we're talking about is the performance report. This is a quarterly performance report that provides uh, key performance indicators like uh, the total flow being used, the total energy, uh, how often a Delta T manager is being used, um, where the valve has been operating and its characteristics. Is it 20% open, 30% open, that type of thing? Uh, have there been any trouble codes uh, launched or triggered with the, with the energy valve? So it gives them kind of a verification of valve operation and also proves the valve's performance because now can look at uh, quarter over quarter, uh, you know, the, the flow savings being achieved through the through the valve itself. So those two there provide not only additional benefit, they also provide a, a labor savings as well, because one, they don't have to, uh, it is not necessary to analyze and crunch data, and it's not on the second point of the performance report, it's not necessary to aggregate and produce a report of that data. So those two things are covering that uh, on uh, from a benefit side. We also offer, <clears throat> excuse me, online support. This here is a direct connection to our Belimo technical support. They can dial into the valve real time, uh, providing a better uh, support experience by having uh, direct connection to the valve. So that would help reduce downtime of the valve. We've also, as I talked about before, uh, directly with the WebView interface, we can have software updates. These can also be updated via the cloud as well. These are something that can be automatically loaded, similar to what you have on your phone or computer or they can be updates that are notified and then the update can be reviewed and it can be installed or, or not dependent on the, uh, on the end user or the customer's wish. One of the largest benefits as well that we've added with the core services of the cloud is an increased warranty to seven years. So the standard warranty for the energy valve is five years, but now this here is an additional two years of warranty. So an additional, so adding up to a total seven years of warranty. Finally, the last thing, uh, the last benefit for the cloud services is lifetime data access. As we talked about in the previous slides, the energy valve actuator stores 13 months worth of rolling data. But in the in, uh, storage in the cloud is for the lifetime of the product. So as soon as the energy valve is connected to the cloud, that data is stored up there for the lifetime of the product. So one single secure consolidated repository for all of the system data <clears throat> of the energy valve. This here could be a very good benefit to uh, facilities that have uh, valves located in multiple buildings or multiple areas, so that way they can consolidate all that data into one place. Also provides a cost savings from storing that data separately themselves. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about uh, some of the design enhancements that we've made. And this one here, we're gonna talk about our uh, advanced ultrasonic technology. Now we talked about on the smaller sizes that we have uh, already have the ultrasonic technology, those smaller sizes being half inch through two inch or DN 15 through 50. And now we're expanding this to our larger sizes, our flange models, DN 65 through 150 or two and a half inch through six inch. So now, with this, we actually have, uh, you know, is actually have an actual flow measurement as opposed to a calculation of delta P and, um, and valve position like a mechanical PI valves. So we actually can see the actual true flow rate coming out of the valve. Can also have a feedback of, uh, of temperature, of valve position, or delta T and power. We also have temperature and glycol compensation. There's an integrated temperature sensor right into the, uh, into the flow sensor itself that and, and an algorithm based on uh, that temperature sensor and glycol concentration that compensates for changes in temperature and glycol uh, ranges, so percentage of glycol, and actually compensates based on fluctuations in those, ensuring that the accuracy over the entire temperature range and varying glycol concentrations. That's how we achieve our very good um, repeatability and accuracy ratings. 
One of the new features that we're incorporating as well with Energy Valve 3.0 is actual glycol monitoring. So now with the Energy Valve 3.0 on the ultrasonic models, we have the ability to output the actual glycol percentage of a system. So if it's operating a 30% glycol, we'll be able to extrapolate that out of the ultrasonic sensor. So providing a unique benefit from any other valve on the marketplace today. So let's talk a little bit about glycol monitoring and some of the benefits there. There's a four key benefits that we like to talk about when we talk about glycol monitoring. Now, <clears throat> glycol content and pump efficiency are linked. They kind of go hand in hand because uh, excessive glycol in a system starts to create negative effects in a couple of different ways. And the first one we're gonna talk about here is through pump efficiency. So as our glycol content increases, our viscosity increases. So the, the media itself actually becomes thicker. So it becomes harder to, uh, harder to move around the system because it's gonna require more pump head because we're creating more pressure drop throughout that system. Again, having a negative impact on our pump efficiency. So it's also gonna create more pumping. So as our glycol content increases, our viscosity increases, that result results in increased in pressure drop and that increase in pressure drop creates, creates an additional pumping requirement using more pump head to pump that media around the system. So there's design levels. There's also a link on the heat exchange side. Uh, excessive glycol contents will also have a negative effect on, on the heat exchanger or the coil. Higher amounts of glycol will have a negative effect or in, almost impede or will impede the coil from meeting discharge air. We've had uh, customer discussions where they've had inability to meet discharge air temperature of a coil, check everything out, everything seemed okay. They turned out they had, for some reason, 70% glycol within the system. Reduce that down to 30% of glycol around the design concentration or able to meet discharge air. So it had a really negative effect on the heat exchange side of the coil as well by having excess, excessive glycol concentration. One of the most natural benefits, of course, that, that you could think of would be safe operation, particularly in colder environments. If you have the appropriate levels of glycol, you're gonna be maintaining uh, safe operation, uh, preventing components from freezing, causing costly damage, and all, all of those combined, which could be very costly in, term, in terms of in terms of downtime, in terms of safe operation. So it is another reason why it is a good idea to monitor the actual glycol content. There's also financial component savings as well. One, because you're not using uh, more glycol than what is needed, but two, with this here, while having a glycol monitoring integrated right in with the control valve. There's a financial savings that goes on there as well. This, uh, this, these glycol monitoring can be pushed back to the BMS via a backnet point, so it can be monitored there as well. So if that were to be done through a traditional uh, refractometer that could tie back to the BMS, that would take an additional control point. Additional control points run anywhere from six to fifteen hundred dollars, possibly even more, depending on where you are. Plus, you also have the cost of the refractometer as well. So now with this all being integrated in one unit, there's a single control point for the valve, which also now outputs the glycol content, and you don't have the additional cost of the glycol content as well. So there's also a nice financial savings that comes along with this, with the glycol monitoring. So we like to summarize it into four key benefits there. So wrapping it up here, we kind of roll the energy valve up into you know a very uh, cost-effective package essentially which is six functions at least six functions uh, in one valve so we now we have cloud services a suite of services providing advanced analytics uh, and additional benefits as well in terms of warranty and, and safe operation and optimized operation so there'll be savings there as well we have a pressure independent control valve an electronic electronic pressure independent control valve which now pr produces the uh, effective hydronic balancing as well, so it's no longer needed for balancing valves. We have monitoring, monitoring directly on the WebView interface as we showed. We also have monitoring directly up in the cloud with the data storage up there as well and performance reporting and so forth. We have Delta T management and logic there. 
saving money by reducing pumping costs. You're optimizing your coil efficiency. There's going to be savings uh, along, coming along with that as well, and as well as glycol monitoring. So we've kind of rolled all those into uh, you know six valves into uh, six functions into one valve. As you can see, there's a, there's been a considerable amount of effort uh, on this on this project. It's something we're extremely proud of here at Belimo, and uh, we also received a lot of industry recognition on it as well. So it's it's one thing for us to be uh, satisfied with it here at Belimo, but when it's recognized in industry as well, it even gives more credibility to the product. Uh, some of the recognition we've see we received is uh, AHR Expo this year, uh, HR Expo a couple years ago. We received uh, from Control Trends, Best Product, of Energy Saving Product of the Year, and several other awards that, that I don't want to go through in, in, in all detail. But it just really shows to the credibility of the product, and it shows to the acceptance in the marketplace. So I'd like once again to thank you all for taking time out of your uh, out of your busy days today to attend this. And at this time, I'd like to open it up for any questions that you may have. All right, thank you so much. So as Scott stated, it is we have now come to the question and answer session. Um, if you do have any questions, please type them into the question box. I will read it aloud, and then Scott will answer your question as best as possible. We are running a little short on time, so if we don't get to answer your question during the webinar, um, rest assured we will be reaching out to you uh, with answers. So just bear in mind, are you all ready? Scott, the first question is, is there a charge for the cloud services? No, the six uh, cloud services that, that we spoke about are all uh, available free of charge just by connecting to the Belimo Cloud. So once, uh, once you're connected to the Belimo Cloud, all of those uh, services are in effect, and there is no additional charge for those. The only thing that is required is uh, purchasing an available uh, Energy Vial 3.0 actuator. Okay. Um, how long must the valve be in operation to leverage the optimization for delta uh, and flow set points? Mm -hmm. uh, we recommend, uh, via, via the cloud, we recommend uh, about two months of uh, data, and that allow, allows enough time to uh, get the entire load profile of the coil. So that would mean flows at the lower end and flows at the higher end, so we can uh, correctly extrapolate the power curve and understand where that power curve starts to saturate, and then there we will make the best determination. So we, we recommend about two months. Um, can this valve be integrated um, into the BAS? Yes, this valve can be integrated into the, the building automation system. Uh, it's, is, it can be controlled via standard analog signal, a 2 to 10 signal or a 0.5 uh, to 10 signal. It could also be integrated through uh, BACnet IP, BACnet MSTP, Modbus RTU, and uh, Modbus TCP as well. Okay, next question. Um, where can I find the technical requirements for the cloud? Uh, all of the technical requirements are going to be in the yeah, available to download as well with the brochure, and that's also available on uh, belimo.us and energyvalve.com. Scott, can you please repeat that question or that answer? You uh, you cut out a tad. Sure. Uh, all of the technical requirements uh, are available in the Energy Valve uh, tech doc, and those are available here in the download. Uh, is a download in this webinar, and they're also available on energyvalve.com. Okay, and it looks like we have one more question. Um, this is a good one, Scott. Uh, when is the Energy Valve 3.0 available for purchase, and when will it start shipping? Uh, it's actually available today. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Our all right. Well, Scott, thank you so much for that excellent webinar. Um, to those of you who we didn't get to answer your questions, we will be reaching out to you um, shortly. Um, to everyone else, thank you so much uh, for joining us on our webinar. Uh, we look forward to uh, having you participate in our webinars in the near future. Thank you so much and have a great day.